Hi, I'm Margaret Ryle, and I want to welcome you back to the second tutorial of the online action research course. The focus today will be understanding action research, and my goal is to help you look through a number of different resources and then suggest some activities that you can do to help increase your understanding of action research, and then that should prepare you for the next video, which will focus more on developing your action research questions. So let's get started. I have us on the Wikispaces page, and you can see that there are a number of different resources for helping you understand action research, and then we'll look at what the activities are. So let's start with how I describe action research. So rather than talk to you at length about it, I'm going to leave you with this document that you can look through, and it can help you get a sense of the way I describe action research and the things that I find important as I help others become action researchers. But what I've learned going to professional conferences on action research and talking with international action researchers is that there are lots of different ways that people think about action research. And we've actually spent a long time on a research project to see what kind of consensus there is. We did a Delphi study that will soon be reported on the American Education and Resource Network website. We have done a study of how leaders and authors in the area of action research have described action research so that we can see if we can find where the consensus lie between these different definitions and descriptions. So we're working on that right now, but I thought it would be useful to look through a number of different resources and see if you can't find some of the fault lines, some of the ways in which one factor is emphasized over another or one approach, one way of doing action research seems more important than another. So I'm giving you a number of different ways of thinking about action research and I'm going to encourage you to look critically to see if you can find what's different about, say, the way I described action research and the way Jean McNiff describes action research. She has a great little booklet that she's had online and it's been very helpful for new researchers because she writes in such a clear, plain, and engaging way. Um, I think she's probably the best writer that I know for both being rigorous and thoughtful and provocative in the way she writes and at the same time being easy to read and clear about what the process of action research is. In fact, I have a definition of action research that I've taken from her new book, which is listed over here, and right now she allows a full download of the book, so I highly recommend, I know that's a temporary thing, but I highly recommend you download the book and read it because it value and virtue in practice-based research. And here's a quote that I've taken from um, that book. Action research is a process of people interacting together, learning with and from one another to understand their practices and situations and to take purposeful action to improve them. Um, you'll see other definitions, so let's, um, let's return to the center. And let's look at the next reference. This is a small little tutorial on action research. And here, action research is talked about as a useful tool. Now, that's a very different way than Jean McNiff was talking about it. This emphasizes the systematic and empirical effort to address topics. There's nothing right or wrong about these different uh, ways of describing action research. Each writer takes their own balance on a number of different dimensions, and I'm going to encourage you to see if you can find those, and then later I'm going to ask you to share your own views. Okay, so why participate in action research, and then the process of doing action research. So take a look at this one, and compare it to what you read in both mine and Jean's, and then come back and take a look at the way in which Roy O'Brien from uh, uh, University of Toronto describes action research. And he starts very clearly with describing action research as a methodology. Okay, and Jean might not describe it as a methodology. 
uh, rather focus on its way of understanding relationships and values and the way in which those interact. So there are different fault lines in the way in which people think about action research, but I encourage you to look through, see if you can find in the language of each of these definitions a slight movement from one side to the other along a number of different dimensions. Finally, because most people think that action research takes place as a professional development activity in education, I showed a chapter from a book that is about how to do community-based action research in the healthcare environments. And so I wanted you to look and see how is action research similar or different in these two different domains. So if you're doing action research in healthcare settings, is it the exact same processes in schools or are there some characteristics of the setting that suggest a different way of thinking about action research? And finally, some of the people that have moved action research forward, Joseph Schrosch from Moravian College, uh, and that's the site of the next Action Research Network of the Americas conference. Um, so his site with his uh, he posts a lot of his students work and it's really worth visiting and worth thinking about the way in which he teaches action research which has a slightly more democratic and emancipatory flavor than what you might have seen in the um, the article from uh, Canada. And Jack Whitehead has been doing action research and often writes with Jean McNiff He's got a website that's worth that's well worth your time visiting lots of different kinds of projects and you'll see that his is a more value-driven approach to action research and a real strong emphasis on living theories, creating your own theories. Linnea uh, Redmaker is the editor of Inquiry and Education Journal and that's a place and all of those papers are available online and it would you know, reading those papers will give you a deeper understanding of how different people come to this activity of action research. The American Education Research Association has a special interest group in action research. Different groups, for example, the Catholic, there is the Catholic Collaborative Action Research Network and a, and a, a very large and well-established network in Europe is the Collaborative Action Research Network. Uh, I've listed two journals are good places for finding um, uh, information about action research. And this bottom one is a list of all sorts of different references that give you a sense of the, how wide action research is. And if you go to the Action Research Network of the Americas, which is a, a new group that has just been formed, and if you go to their map, you will see that in less than a year, they have had visits from all over the world. All these dots represent um, from one to 10 visits from people from all these different countries. Uh, and it shows that the interest in action research is worldwide. So I encourage you to explore uh, all of these resources and I'd like you to return to our activity page where you can see I've listed three activities for this period. One of the ways you can work on your understanding of action research is spend some time reflecting in your blog. Um, what is clear or unclear to you about action research? What are some of the ways that you can increase your understanding of action research? What did you get from reading these different descriptions or maybe looking at what other people have done in areas that are similar to yours? You can use Google um, to search for action research and your topic of interest. And I'm guessing that you will find somebody who has done action research in the area that you're planning to work on. These online polls, uh, as I said, when you're reading, I, I'm hoping that you will read with a critical orientation, trying to get a sense of how people are both similar and different in the way they describe action research. And then I hope that you will actually go through and take this poll on each of these different questions. So these are different kind of dimensions that I have seen people 
argue about when they uh, challenge one another's view of what action research is. So I thought it might be fun to put it in a poll and have each of you respond and then you can see if you are in alignment with what other people think or if your views are really different. So that hopefully will be something that you enjoy doing and you will learn from uh, seeing how your views compare to others. Building knowledge really takes sharing knowledge and so if you're in a learning circle that's great. Share what you're learning in your learning circle forum. If you're not in a learning circle and you still want to um, have a discussion, there is an option here that allows you to post your views. And if you post your views here, I'd be happy to look at them and respond to them. And um, hopefully that will help you in your own process of understanding action research. And then I'm, I hope you'll return for the next phase, which will be to think about your action research questions, your problems so that you will be able to start framing the action, start thinking about solutions to, to challenges that you see in your setting that will help you be able to live your values in a more full way. So that's it for now. Enjoy reading and see you next time.